By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have another game for you from the Uthen Troll Cup in Leeuwarden, in the Netherlands. I believe this is game number three. And uh, again, this is going to be some really nice and interesting decks uh, with players I don't know. I don't know all the players and we're getting more and more players in the Netherlands, which I think is fantastic. And we have the player on the left who is playing with a red-green deck and we have the player on the right who's playing with a troll disco deck. Now before we're going to the actual games, I'm just going to show you a possible starting hand of both of these decks and kind of discuss their tactics. So do a little bit of deck tech. Now if you'd like to go straight to the games, you probably know what I'm already going to tell you. You can look in the description below and you can click on a link and it will take you straight to game number one um, but before that like I said I am going to look at both of these decks and starting with the red green build the first deck that I would take uh, would like to take a look at with you is the red green deck so this is a sample hand of the red green deck and what we can see is that um, you know obviously he's playing with tie guys also playing with city of brass and what I really like about this deck is that he's playing with Kurt Abe so I mean it's one of my favorite creatures uh, I always was surprised how strong it was you know it's it's a one drop a two three one drop potentially and especially when you combine it with the taiga so that's um that's we're probably going to see that obviously the kurt ape um is seeing less play because of the mishra's factories and the fact that they can pump themselves to three three so there are other creatures that are kind of suffering uh from this but kurt ape is definitely one of them um after the kurt ape we see the urnum jinn we see a lot of urnum jinns at this tournament and it's not a surprise because it's a crazy strong creature one green and three makes it easy to use in most decks if you only just play a little bit of green and it gives you that four five and especially that five toughness is really hard to play against because a lot of players are playing with four four creatures and um, then it's just difficult to kind of get rid of that urnum gen and after that we see a city of brass that kind of makes sense because he's also splashing into two black uh, cards demonic tutor and mind twist so city of brass can help him to cast those uh, cards and then there's a card that surprised me a little bit i'm not sure if he plays it main i do believe it i do believe he does actually uh, and it is a blood moon and blood moon is a surprise in the sense that he's playing with city of brass and he's playing with taigas i believe he's also playing with mishra's factories so with a blood moon you're turning all of that off on the other hand, he is playing with the playset of Lanora Elves and he is playing with Birds of Paradise as well. So perhaps he's thinking the Blood Moon is going to damage my opponent more or maybe there's a tactic in his deck that I haven't found yet. So this is going to be something that I'm going to look forward to to kind of see, okay, how is that Blood Moon uh, working? And then we also see another card that in a sense surprised me a little bit, uh, Jame De Tome. Um, it, it's not a surprise because you're playing with green, so you're playing with a lot of ramp. Hey, I, I already mentioned the Lanowar Elves and the Birds of Paradise. It is a surprise in the sense that what is your tactic? Are you playing pure red-green aggro? Or are you playing red-green ramp with some mid-range cards? Because for me, a Tome is more of a mid-range card. Um, and then of course we see the fireball which which makes sense because when you're ramping a lot of mana it's easy to build a huge fireball so one of the things that I think we could see if the red green deck is gonna work on full cylinders is that he's going to deal a lot of damage early game you know um, turn two turn three turn four and then somewhere around turn six finish it with a fireball or maybe when the game's kind of in a stall um, use the fireball to be decisive. I do believe he is playing with a channel. I'm not sure but so Possibly we can see a channel fireball. That would be uh, uh, pretty cool Anyway, this is a starting hand of the red green deck. Now. Let's take a look at the troll disco deck The opponent of the red green deck is playing with a troll disco deck and the nice thing here is that he's made some um, not obvious choices and uh, I always like that I like it when there are a few cards that are different when it's not just you know I copied a list um, but really making a list your own and I believe it's also more of a budget build and what we see here, of course is the uh, Nevenero's disc Larry Nevin's disc and that's that's a key card in, in any troll disco deck anybody can tell you that that's that's no news uh, four discs of course and the idea here is you play your Nevenero's disc and the creatures that you have in play have regenerate so when you blow up everything you can just uh, regenerate your creatures 
and then your opponent loses all of their creatures and all the stuff that they have on the battlefield and then when it's your turn you untap your set trolls you untap your earth trolls in this case you can even untap your will of the wisp <laughs> you know um and then you activate your mitchell's factory and then you just start hitting your opponent um it's really nice uh, we see that some people play troll disco in combination with animate deaths I'm not sure if this uh, player is doing that, so that's something that I'm definitely going to look at. But the Neverworld's Disc, obviously a key card here. Um, then we see the Badlands, um, kind of indicating the colors that he chose for, so the, the red and the black. And we have the Setch Troll. Now obviously Setch Troll is this amazing creature that works perfectly with Badlands. It's basically a 3-3 three, three, uh, for 3 with Regenerate, so that those are amazing stats, especially in old school. And then, of course, we have that Mishra's Factory. I believe both players are playing with Mishra's Factory, so perhaps we're going to see some battles. I wonder if the Troll Disco player is playing with Shatters. I do know that the Red Green player is playing with some Scavenger Folk, so maybe we can see some Scavenger Folk shenanigans. Um, then there's the Uthton Troll. Now, obviously, we're at the Uthton Troll Cup uh, here in Leowarda. And what's really nice is that both players are playing with this creature, so very flavorful. Uh, but in this deck, it, it, it really fits, you know, because you have the whole regeneration theme with the with the disc. And then we have this classic creature, and I'm really happy that he's playing with this, because it doesn't see a lot of play anymore, the Will of the Wisp. And maybe this is one of those creatures that you think, it used to be really popular, you know, uh, back in the day, uh, and now we don't see it. And does that mean that people have forgotten about the card, and it is actually better than we think it is? Or... Does it make sense? Because, hey, there are so many slots, uh, I mean, so many choices and not a lot of slots. And what, usually Will of the Wisp just doesn't make the cut. So I'm really curious. Uh, personally, I really like Will of the Wisp in a deck that plays Bad Moons, because then you've got a really cheap regeneration flyer that can deal some damage. Um, but yeah, let's let, let's see how it works in here. Obviously, the, the Troll Disco guy is not playing with a bad moon that would be a very bad decision <laughs> because um because because of uh, the red the red creatures most of his creatures are red that's what i'm trying to say here and then we have the flower stone and i think the flower stone is a really nice card when you're kind of trying to play budget um because it is a mana rock and it is mana ramp so when you don't play with green or an, or you know you can use your flower stone and if you don't have the moxen flower stone is a really nice affordable choice and it's one of those cards that actually is a lot better than you might think it is especially in old school because a lot of times your opponent will have a city of brass so that means that your flower stone can make any color of mana but it doesn't uh, do, deal you any damage so it gives you the up but not the the down so anyway this is the troll disco player really looking forward to see those will o the wisps in action and i think this could be a really tight game actually because the Troll Disco game, uh, player, I believe, is also playing with, with a Fireball, or at least with some direct damage. I think some bolts and some chains. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting here. So let's quickly go to game number one and uh, see what's going to happen. Game number one between the red-green player with a splash of black sitting on the left side and the um, Troll Disco player sitting on the right. And I believe both of these players are playing with some original cards in their decks uh, and i think this is a nice example seeing uh willow the wisp here and a fireball for one in turn one or turn two i should say uh, the willow the wisp unable to regenerate so it was an easy target here did cost him a fireball though and there are the argovian pixies <laughs> look at this another fireball so this is kind of a fireball match here uh both creatures uh, have seen huge fireballs and are now dead they're in the graveyard and there is the scavenger folk can be very useful against the mistress factory and it looks like the troll player is having some issues with his land drops here the troll disco player and it seems that we had a little glitch here luckily it's going away that was very annoying little glitch on the camera and there is a demonic tutor and he has found that land drop finally but he is far behind on lands though so it's going to be difficult for him to get back and look at that a mind twist brutal and then after that demonic tutor 
both these players of course playing with black um, so we're gonna see some demonic tutors and mind twists here and obviously the green red player is splashing black I believe just for the mind twist and demonic tutor and there is a chaos orb so maybe we'll see a flip that would be nice and I wonder if he's going to use his scavenger folk kind of forcing his opponent to use the chaos orb or can he wait until activation of course that's probably better maybe that's what they're discussing right now so that would then be the better option so there's an attack here by the scavenger folk it seems and an attack by the 2-2 Mishra's factory to deal some damage here it's the first damage of this game and there is another troll the Satch troll and it's a 3-3 because we have a swamp in play because of those badlands and there's the Uthan troll very nice tournament card they should get a beer or something every time you kind of play an, an Ufton Troll at the championship that's called the Ufton Troll Cup. But maybe that would get a little expensive because a lot of players were playing Trolls, by the way. So maybe that's not the best idea. But an interesting um, board state here. It's kind of a standstill. These players need a flyer, just a good old-fashioned flyer. I mean, in old-school magic, flyers, flying is still like a great evasion mechanic. But he's just passing turn here, finding another land. And look at that, a disc. And that is actually great news for the Troll Disco player. Finding that disc. There's a regrowth. Ugh, on the mind twist. Is he gonna twist for one? And taking care of the disc now with the scavenger folk. Passing turn. So he has that mind twist in hand. Kind of like a... It's not really nice playing against a player when you know that he still has a mind twist in hand. It's kind of this pressure. And I see a bad moon there. And he's playing it out now. So that changes the scenery a little bit. In response, there's that strip mine activation on the Mishra's factory. So that means that the opponent now only has mountains. It's not that bad, I guess, because he's playing red and, and black. So he can still play out his red creatures and, of course, his artifact creatures. And that Felwer Stone now only producing red mana. And an interesting choice here actually by the red green player as well because he has also deactivated his own mind twist by playing that blood moon because he doesn't have any black mana maybe he plays elves of uh, deep shadow there is a fireball and of course he cannot regenerate but he's going to respond by doing a flip and let's see if he can hit it and it is a hit so it turns back into land and now he can regenerate his troll and at least the red green player gets to attack here and the troll disco is going back to down to 15. Interesting game so far actually. And there's five damage being dealt with the Setch troll and the factory. And despite the mind twist and and the pressure of the red green player i kind of feel that the troll disco player is still really in this obviously he only has one card in hand and his opponent has a full grip of cards so that could be a maybe deciding here let's see taking a damage is he gonna twist for one probably not it's looking he is gonna twist for one taking care of that shatter And that's it. That's all he does. Taking three more damage. Going going to ten now. After taking the damage earlier from his own City of Brass. And playing an Urnum Jin. A little bit of beef on the board. So I guess that's a good thing. Now he's going to block. He's going to regenerate his troll. And the factory is going to pump itself to 3-3. 
And I do believe I see a channel in the hand of the red-green player. So he's playing with the combo channel fireball, but obviously now he's down on life compared to the troll player. So it's not going to help him much at this point in the game. And to be honest, I kind of feel that taking back that mind twist maybe wasn't the best possible play. Taking a damage now, playing a demonic tutor, so both black power cards are being played out here. And every time I see this game, these games with people like splashing black for those two cards, I keep thinking, yeah, maybe I should do that more often as well, because they're just so incredibly powerful. And it looks like, okay, so he's now going to shuffle again. I wanted to say it looks like he's not sure what he wants to pick as he kept going on after that pick. Sometimes I do that as well. Sometimes when I tutor, I kind of put the top three cards on the back to see what I want to get and then make a final decision. But I guess in this case, he knew what he wanted to get. And he's passing turn now again. Playing the maze. Using the maze, I should say, on the set troll. Drawing a card here. And playing a disc. Oh, he's also playing with discs. Interesting. <laughs> We've got a little bit of a disc standoff then. Oh, and look at that. Nine damage and that's it. That's game. Oh, that came out of nowhere. He was saving up that, those in his hand. Wow. This is really unexpected. You get mind twisted twice and you still win the game. My hat off to you, sir, player on the right. Uh, let's give them some time to sideboard and we'll see them back in game number two. Game number two is about to begin. And that was a surprise that that troll disco player. Was it a double chain and single bolt? So I guess they always say, you know, when you're playing against direct damage, and I guess they're both playing with it, so it's okay. Um, but they always have to think, okay, I'm going below three, I have to be careful. Now, when you're playing old school, you also have side blast. So when you're playing against blue, you have to think, okay, I don't want to go below four, it's getting careful. But I mean, nine, usually when you're on nine life and your opponent, you know, only has, I think he only had three cards in hand. You don't think, oh, well, maybe he's going to play uh, two chains and a bolt. But obviously, it is it is a uh, realistic risk. And I guess he's playing a lot of burn in his Troll Disco uh, deck. Interesting. And maybe that's part of the tactic and the reason why he's playing the Will of the Wisps. Just to kind of like play them um, to keep your opponent off. And then building a huge fireball or drawing into your, uh, your Dire Damage cards. That's, of course, a possibility. And uh, I do feel it's... Uh, it's a nice achievement if you've been mind twisted not once but even twice and and you still win a game that's got to be good for your confidence level here and there's a mistress factory now by the uh, green red player and a basic swamp and attacking here for two going to 18 and there's the strip mine not untapping his factory for some reason i guess he's just forgetting to do it right now and there's the current ape a nice classic card and of course it's two three because of that forest i love seeing this good old-fashioned combinations kind of takes me back you know basic mountain and a basic forest and you've got a two three honest curd ape attacking here now and there is the strip mine and there's a terror maybe that came in from the sideboard but that means both creatures are gone and there's a willow the wisp Passing turn again. And now there's a strip mine on the other side of the table. Is he going to take care of that dual land? Tapping four, and yes, an Urnum Jin. Kind of expected that. Oh, interesting. Playing a sinkhole on the strip mine. Not a bad decision. Attacking, obviously taking the damage because he's not able to uh, regenerate his Willow. And there's the JDM Tome. And that book can uh, can give him some cards, you know. Those cards can slowly win you the game. Looking at his hand. 
And I actually wonder, I don't think he's playing with any bat moon, so I guess the idea with the Will-O-The-Wisp is just to use it purely as a blocker, which is fine. And there is a disc, and of course the Willow works great with the disc mechanic as well, being able to regenerate. I do like to see Willow the Wisp, I would like to see it more in games, it's such a beautiful card. It used to see a lot of play. And there's a crumble. That means he's gaining four life. So he's going back to 16. And I wonder if that crumble came from his sideboard. It wouldn't surprise me. And here's a double attack. So taking care, he just gained four lives, but he's, he's losing six. So he's going back to 10. That's pretty good. It's pretty good play here. And it looks like the troll disco player is in a little bit of trouble. I mean, he has a disc in hand. If you look closely, you can see that. But if he plays it out, then he cannot regenerate his Willow anymore. And he has to take more damage again. Playing a Demonic Tutor. And what is he going to look up? Passing turn, so he's not going to play it out now. Maybe he just looked up a land, so he can play his disc and also regenerate his Willow. And there's a Sylvan Library. It looks like a foreign edition because the colors are very vivid. It's always nice to see the difference. And there's a Terror taking care of that Urnum. He is taking two damage though, going to eight. And he hasn't done much blocking with the Willow so far. And again, tapping out completely. And he is on 8 life. I mean, at a certain point, you could also think, okay, maybe I'm just going to chum block with the Willow, which of course is not great. But the red-green player is also playing with direct damage. And now having that Sylvan. If he now can take care of the disc, I believe the game is kind of done, the second game. Okay, he's pulling a card with the book. It's kind of hard to see his life total because he's behind that box. And there is another sinkhole taking care of the factory, regenerating his willow, and then destroying everything. <clears throat> so, tapping there to the city, taking another damage. Again, we see the Demonic Tutor. And he's on 13 now. These decks are pretty pretty close together on power level. It's nice to see. It's an interesting battle. Playing a channel. Are we going to see a Fireball? I'm curious. He is tapped out, so it's kind of safe to do now. Yeah, <laughs> channel fireball victory! <laughs> nice! And that was good timing as well, because he can, like, first play a bolt to kind of, like, stack it up. Uh, in response, play a bolt, I should say, his opponent, because it was tapped out as well. It's always risky playing a channel fireball, but in this case, he was safe, because all the mana were... Well, he was tapped out, so that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, wow, seeing a channel fireball uh, win... That's been a while, and I think the first one here on the channel. So these players are going to shuffle up, and we'll see them back in game number three. Game number three, the decisive game here. I love it when we get to game three. Exciting. And uh, the Troll Disco player gets to start if he wants to. He gets to choose, I guess. Usually you choose to be on play. Playing a mountain passing turn. Forest into a Birds of Paradise. So some extra ramping here. And there's a Terror. Quick Terror. End of Birds of Paradise. I was kind of hoping to see a Lightning Bolt, to be honest. Like, Bolt the Bird. But it didn't happen. We didn't see a Bolt of the Bird. And uh, it seems that the player on the left is a little bit distracted. Maybe ordering a beer or two. Who knows? Untapping now. Drawing for turn. Yeah, 
going into his second turn here. Full grip of cards, playing a strip mine, taking care of that bat lance, playing a scavenger folk. Second mountain here into a soul ring and the Ufton troll. Nice, a black bordered one. It's hard for me to see what edition. But it's cool to see one here at the Ufton Troll Cup in Leeuwarden. And in the meantime, we also see the scavenger folk taking care of the soul ring. And here we have the big ape again. A 2-3 now because of the forests, the curd ape. But of course the troll has regeneration. 